Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of the thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. I understand. Do you? Her name's Lakin Riley, not Lincoln Riley. But what ticked off some Democrats, it wasn't Biden messing up Riley's name. It was his choice of words when talking about the alleged murderer. Now, you should have said undocumented, but I, that's not a big thing. Okay. What, what's the big thing yeah, about that? No, 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 I, was, I, I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment. But you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh -huh. He said illegal. I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. I don't think it's a big deal. But, but more broadly. Because I think the, his focus was on the sympathy for the family. Yeah. It's a terrible tragedy. There has been at least one Democrat that has criticized it. Um, Joaquin Castro has said, like, this using that word and illegal uh, dehumanizing is problematic. What did you make well, of that? Well, that's moment? probably true. He probably should have used a different word, and I think he would know that. They weren't the only Democrats angered by the president's use of illegal. Fellow Democrats vented on social media. Illinois Congressman Garcia, I'm extremely disappointed to hear the president use the word illegal. Why? Because it was accurate? Elon or more, no human is illegal. They, it actually is in this country. Those are laws. And Congressman Joaquin Castro blasted Biden for his, quote, rhetoric. I guess just that rhetoric, not the rest of it. But not one of them, not one, has posted a single word about Lakin Riley herself or the tragedy of her life ending at the young age of 22, a death that was preventable, Sean. Yeah, uh, get her name right, right? Uh, Joe Biden, is, I think Harris, you just mentioned this before, he had a pin in front of him that had her name on it. Don't call her Lincoln, call her Lakin. She deserves that respect. But also, you have Democrats that are angry about uh, Joe Biden using the term illegal. They should be angry that Lakin Riley is not here because of Joe Biden's open borders. That's where the anger should be, that she couldn't be there tonight. She couldn't see the speech tonight because Joe Biden has let all these illegals into the country, and she lost her life because of that. That's where the anger should be. And if you look at Democrats who are so misguided on this policy, um, and why they're, they're failing in the polls is they're not channeling the fear and anger that Americans have over the open border policy. They're more concerned about the terminology that's used about illegals. Unbelievable. And the abject lack of respect, Tammy, to, to not get it right, the curious thing is for a president that can't even answer a simple question without the use of a note card, her name was in writing in front of his face all night, including the moment he entered the chamber when I believe it was Congressman Mike Collins who pointed, you saw him lean over the edge, point to the button that said Lake and Riley in the president's face, who I guess ignored that and then a hundred other times, including the button he held in his own hand. He utterly failed in that moment. He did. It's almost as though Lakin had the temerity to get beaten to death, ruining their narrative, ruining their control of language, reminding people about what the dynamic is. Of course, she's not the only woman to be assaulted or killed in this country. So many untold numbers that don't make the news, that maybe aren't connected. We don't know who the killer was. The, the local police, there aren't enough to be able to track people down. ICE doesn't know because then they leave the town. I mean, there is such chaos. So this kind of an event is a reminder, a microcosm, a reminder of the nature of what's happening in the country. Lakin could be our daughter, our sister, our best friend, our mother, a nurse, potential nurse training to help other people, gone. No children, no grandchildren, generations wiped out because of that dynamic, and they want to ignore it. Like East Palestine, you just don't go for a year. People might forget. Keep it under the blanket. That's what they're doing here. It's obscene and Americans don't like it. Right. But mention how children need clean water and how you're changing the pipes, as President Biden did. And here's the, the issue, too, I have with a focus on the word illegal. It, it, it's so um, distracting. It's so beside the point of the utter tragedy that Tammy laid out. What's next? Shaming a rape victim for wearing a short skirt? Oh, we have to treat the alleged murderer with kid gloves because it doesn't fit your narrative? Well, we don't know what his policy really is going to be yet. <laughs> So I, I think that he, he sometimes talks around this issue either because he embraces the, the open border and doesn't want to admit that or because he really doesn't know how to fix it without using Trump's policies. I mean, he's kind of in a stuck place with all of this. I wonder if he would have even tried to say Lake and Riley's name had not Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor yes. Greene not heckled him. I mean, she called him out. And I, I could hear it in the distance, and I think others joined her, say her name, and he, he gave it his best try. 
Um, so that was kind of an I don't believe, because we have an embargoed speech that we could see beforehand. Mm -hmm. That was not part of what he was expected to say. So he's now in a stuck place. His policies don't work. Trump's did. Oh, boy, I can't lean on that. There's this woman. She's, she's just been murdered. I do want to say this. He did call the killer, though, an illegal, which I was confused by because I thought he was a man who might have said the word suspect. Like, I, I, I thought that maybe he might have, because it doesn't go with what Emily's saying. If he was illegal, then how come nobody else is? Like, I don't, I don't even understand. I don't even think he understands it. I want to talk to you, Kaylee, about the strategy. I, I wanted to ask whether that was effective. So we know because we had that embargoed speech, it technically was a, a deviation. So he tried his best, botched it, you could argue, to both, right? Because now the Dems are mad at him for being honest with the status of the alleged murderer, and people who have common sense and compassion are mad for getting the name wrong. So was this in any way, did this do him well? Did this set him back? What are your thoughts on the strategy effect? It was the single worst moment of the State of the Union, of his speech, certainly, and, and perhaps of, of many, many addresses over a long period of time. To, to say the wrong name of a 22-year-old who died, say the wrong name after, by the way, has he called the family yet? We know former President Trump did. Did current President Biden call the family yet? Ask for an update at the White House briefing. I'd love to know. So you haven't called the family. You get the name wrong. And then the next thing you say is this, how many thousands of people are being killed by illegals? Spare me, Mr. President. Spare me. I, I don't care about numbers. This is one person, one girl, one unique, beautiful soul who put on her shoes, put on her tank top, put on her shorts, went for a run and ended up dead with her skull smashed in. So don't talk to me about thousands, numbers. These are numbers, these are names. And if you have the audacity to try to say her name, get it right. Pick up the phone, call the family, do it today. He hadn't practiced it. I mean, that, that, that was really clear. Lincoln Riley, by the way, is a real person. And maybe there are several of them, but the one who's famous is the University coach. of Southern California football coach uh, of the Trojans. So, I mean, he tried. He tried in that moment. But where he really failed was to tell the real story about the border and what he's going to do about it. Right. Failure all around. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.